Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room and on today's video I'm making a quilt inspired by Japanese ukiyo-e art. And what is ukiyo-e art? You may not be familiar with that term, I wasn't until I learned it recently, but you're probably familiar with this work of art by Hokusai. This is Hokusai's The Great Wave of Kanagawa. I would say it's probably the most recognizable work of ukiyo-e art in the West to Western people. It's a very famous work of art by Hokusai. It's actually part of a series called The 36 Views of Mount Fuji. I was inspired to do this quilt because I went to the Hokusai Museum in Tokyo last year and all of the art was so beautiful and lovely. I thought I need to find some way to make this into a quilt. So we're gonna get into it. When I went there, I was shocked to discover that the Great Wave painting is actually not a painting at all it's a woodblock print and it's about 10 inches by 14 inches i somehow thought it was huge i guess because you usually see it in like a poster and on like big signs and stuff so i just assumed that it was big i didn't know anything about woodblock prints i didn't even know what that was but i'm very curious whether other people know that do people in the west know that it's actually just this big and it's not a painting but it's a woodblock print so comment below comment below if you or let me know whether you knew that or if you think people know that or if you've ever even thought about it before but we're gonna get more into ukiyo-e art in this video i'm gonna try to explain what it is and what's going on but first let's talk about the quilt project that i'm gonna do i have got my hands on this fabric that i bought i forget where <laughs> I found it probably online. Um, I know that this was printed by Spoonflower. And this, I think I got this in Tokyo, in the Nippori Fabric Town. So, one at a time. This fabric, it contains as the background, kind of like a street map of, I guess, Tokyo. I mean, I can't read it, but it doesn't necessarily matter. It's just a street map. And then, oh, I held it upside down. And then the um, sum of the actual woodblock prints from Hokusai's series, The 36 Views of Mount Fuji. And you can see on here, The Great Wave is one of them. Right there. This one is a series of ukiyo-e woodblock prints by a contemporary of Hokusai named Hiroshige. And these are stunning too. I had heard of these until recently. I've had this fabric for a while not knowing what to do with it and then yesterday the idea struck me and I even, this is not a lie, I even started working on it in my dream last night. I was literally designing this quilt and working on it in my dream. And this fabric here has some of the woodblock prints kind of rendered in, in circles or in ovals, which they're not in real life, they're round. But I originally thought Maybe I could do my Dale Fleming freezer paper, setting the circle into a background technique. Um, but last night I did it in my dream and I didn't care for the way it looked. So we're not gonna do it. So this is my secret hack for designing your quilts. If you're afraid to cut them in the waking world, just work on it in your dreams. You know, I was very excited to do this idea yesterday. I was obsessing over it all day and all night, excited to start today. It's no wonder that I would dream about it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut out the actual pictures of the woodblock prints. I can't do all of them. I'm going to select my favorites out of both of these fabrics and then use this um, street part as well cut it up into strips and then this is the other fabric these are solids this is just red red and maroon and a blue and a dark blue i'm gonna cut these into inch and a half strips and then we're gonna make stripes out of them and then sew the stripes together around these in kind of an improv fashion and I know it's gonna look good because I've done it before in my sleep last night. Okay, so let's just get started. I guess I need to fussy cut these out, select my favorites from both the fabrics, and that's that. 
So stay tuned. We're going to talk more about ukiyo-e art and the history and what it is throughout the video as I make the quilt. But for now, I'm going to start cutting things. Ukiyo-e is a Japanese style of art that was popular from the 17th to the 19th centuries. It usually depicted celebrities or characters from kabuki theater, plants and animals, and landscapes. One technique for producing ukiyo-e art was by making woodblock prints. To do this, they would draw the image on a thin sheet of paper and then glue the sheet of paper to a piece of wood and then they would use the lines on the paper to chisel away at the wood and basically create a stamp. If their image contained multiple colors, they would have to do this one time per each color. Then they would brush the ink onto the wood and use that as a stamp to print the image on paper and then do it again for each different color that the image should contain. Once they had the wood blocks carved, they would be able to print the same image over and over again and sell the prints.
One of the most well-known ukiyo-e artists was Katsushika Hokusai. He created his own style within the genre of ukiyo-e, just like me when I davitized my quilts. He started as an apprentice woodcarver and student of ukiyo-e at age 14, but he was eventually expelled because he was incorporating Western influences into his art. But his expulsion only motivated him to hone his craft on his own. He made over 30,000 pieces of art in his life, but his series, The 36 Views of Mount Fuji, completed in 1833, is generally considered his masterpiece. The series shows Mount Fuji from various different perspectives and in different seasons and weather conditions. My favorite one of the series is number 14, Tea House at Koishikawa. I like it because I like the winter scene and the fact that if you can't find Mount Fuji, our girl is pointing right at it. I went to the Museum of Hokusai's art last year in Tokyo and I saw many of his surviving woodblock prints and original drawings. They also had this reproduction of what his studio looked like, and that's him beside his daughter. I'm not gonna add more pictures. I just decided uh, I, I want more negative space like this. I don't know if you if that's really called negative space. I just want more space like this. I like it, and like this. That's a little too loud, but <laughs> and like this. And again, we do have a lot there. All right, I I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna put one more picture here. I have the fabric here. These batting scraps are fusible, but I'm just not super impressed with the fusibleness of it. It tends to come apart. So I'm gonna still use my safety pins. Here we are. We'll put extra where the join is. It's not a bad idea, I guess, to use two different forms of basting 
because the fusible, when I used it last time, it just wasn't strong enough. It kept coming out. This is really not the way they recommend you put um, batting scraps together. They recommend that you use your um, zigzag foot, sorry, your zigzag setting on your machine and do a zigzag across the join. But I find that if you just baste it, if you put the quilt together and, and Frankenstein your batting scraps and then baste them in place, that works fine too. Maybe it's a little bit less than perfect, but who cares? It's fine. I'm not even giving this quilt to anyone. I don't even know who's getting this quilt. If any of my friends want it, they can probably have it. See, batting is, I mean, you can move it around and you can fudge it. So like, it doesn't quite join here, but I can just kind of coax it into place. Iron it to fuse the fusing down, and then I'll still add safety pins as well. This fusing, I mean, I don't think that is hot enough to go through to the other side, and this is a double-sided fusible, which like, it's good in theory because then it fuses both sides together, but the heat, I feel like the heat doesn't really go through all the way to iron the backing on, so then I would have to flip it over and iron the back. And in the process of doing that, they could easily shift. Hence the safety pin, but then it's like, if I'm gonna put all these safety pins in, why do I even need to go back and iron the back? I'm not going to. I'm just gonna let the safety pins do their job at that point. I could just use safety pins and not even fuse it at all, but it does have some hold, so why not? Why not fuse it too? And that's literally all I'm going to do. And now I'm gonna switch over to my free motion foot. <laughs> and I have this. I don't have much of this left. This is what color I like, but I don't have very much of it left. We'll see how far I get. I'm just gonna follow the ditch. Not necessarily every ditch, but that's what I'm gonna do. So here I go. This is the final result. I find it so stunning. That's going to be all for today's video. If you like my quilts, please like and subscribe to my channel. I bring you new quilt videos every other Tuesday. Thank you for coming to Dave's Craft Room and please come again.